attack was carried out in America's largest and most recognizable city. New York's police department boasts one of the most sophisticated counterterrorism units in the world, dedicated solely to thwarting attacks. Let's turn to CGTN's John Terra. John, uh, this incident is being compared to others in recent history. Yes, it is, Mike. But before I tell you about that, there's some late news in within the last half hour regarding the suspect who has been named as a 29-year-old man from Uzbekistan. He is thought to be a resident of Tampa in Florida and also Passaic in New Jersey, which is about 30 miles outside New York City in the state of New Jersey. The news within the last half hour is that he is now out of surgery in an unnamed hospital here in Manhattan. And also, it's being reported that in the van that he rented and allegedly used in today's attack, there was a note pledging his allegiance to ISIS. New Yorkers, of course, are used to this sort of thing. They always go back to that day in September 2001, 9-11. And this, Mike, was the worst terrorist attack in the city since that date. There have been others. In May 2010, a car bomb almost went off in Times Square. A passerby noticed that there was smoke coming from a vehicle and alerted the authorities. And the bomb was diffused, or it didn't actually come to the point in which it exploded. It was in a street near to the crossroads of the world. Uh, that man was arrested and later charged and convicted and is in jail. In September of last year, a pipe bomb went off in the New Jersey shore town of Seaside Heights, just as a fun run was going by. And later on the same day in Chelsea, an area of Manhattan, there was an explosion in a dumpster in which 29 people were injured. Explosives were later found at a New Jersey railway station. A man was arrested, charged, and his court case is going on at the moment. And then in May of this year, a red car plowed into pedestrians in the crossroads of the world in Times Square. It was feared that it was terrorism. Turned out not to be. Turned out to be a driver who was intoxicated, but it pointed to the dangers of living in this city, which has always been a very high profile target, particularly after 9-11 and after the first attack on the World Trade Center 10 years before that. Mike? Uh, we've seen similar attacks like this, as you know, John, in Berlin and Nice in 2016, these trucks plowing into people. What can be done about these so-called lone wolf attackers? Well, the authorities say the that's right. The authorities say the short answer is really not a lot. And I will tell you from my own reporting for CGTN that this is the biggest fear that authorities have all over the world. It doesn't matter which city they're in, whether it's Beijing or Paris or Washington or New York City or London. They are concerned about the person who might do something like this without really making any waves beforehand, without really telling anybody. Now, some people say you can't really be a lone wolf because you have to involve somebody else, whether it's the person you rent the truck from or it's somebody in your family or a close friend. But nonetheless, the term has come to be widely accepted as that of somebody who is essentially acting alone and at any given moment. And the police say that it's very, very difficult, nigh on impossible, in fact, to guess when somebody might do that. There are lots of people around the world who are disaffected with all sorts of things, including life here in the United States, and feel excluded from society. Now, I will tell you that here in New York, it is Halloween. It's the 31st of October. It's the start of the holiday season. And there is a big parade taking place right now in the village, another area of Manhattan. Lots of people are there. It's a Halloween celebration. And they were encouraged to come out tonight and act completely normally by the mayor and the governor. Mike. John Terrett, Live Force in New York. Thanks so much.